We're back with the Fox News alert. Overnight, the IDF confirming it has taken out another senior Hezbollah terrorist on the U.S. wanted list, seen as a likely successor to slain leader Hassan Nasrallah. So they took out Nasrallah, and then they took out the guy that replaced him right away. But as Israel continues to dismantle Iran-backed Hezbollah, Joe Biden still pushing for a truce. The president is a ground incursion into Lebanon inevitable. Fire for a ceasefire. Will you respond to the missile attacks on the U.S. warships in the Red Sea? We're responding. Our next guest knows all about fighting against Islamists, and that's former U.S. Army Green Beret Lieutenant Colonel Scott Mann joins us now. Colonel, thanks for being here. Thanks, thanks for having me, Pete. Uh, it doesn't feel like those shouted answers inspire much uh, confidence, and we're, we're hearing reports that Israel didn't let the White House know previously about this strike because they were worried that the White House would say, don't do it. Yeah, and if that is the case, I mean, that's extremely telling. Uh, it's like we need to step back and take a collective look in the mirror if Israel withheld that information from us because they were afraid we would actually intervene with the attack. Mm -hmm. That's troubling. It, but uh, would it surprise you? <sighs> right now, no. I mean, I think one of the things that I'm concerned about is it almost seems like since the fall of Kabul, we have really been challenged with how we show up as an ally against international terrorism. You know, the countries that we should be at their shoulder and we've historically been at their shoulder, mm -hmm. all of a sudden now we're not. And it's to the point that they don't even trust us enough as a partner to be at their shoulder in the moment of truth. So they just leave us out of the equation. I exactly. Mean, so what do local, and you work so often with local allies, that's what you did as a Green Beret. Yeah. When they sense that America is saying, hey, that's not our fight anymore, uh, for whatever reason, uh, what's their reaction? Well, I mean, what you've seen here is where they'll just go it alone, you know, and to, to scream for a ceasefire after the horrorism of October 7 and what they went through, I don't think that's what we would do, right? And so to expect them to do that is just, it's beyond the pale, and uh, it's just not realistic. And whether you're, whether you're working with a village in Afghanistan or you're working with an international partner that's a nation state, how you show up in the moment of truth determines how they show up for you. And that's what I'm most concerned about, because mm -hmm. we're just as much in the crosshairs as Israel is. Absolutely. Uh, okay, you've been so good to us on this program for so long. I want to take a moment to, to promote your new book. It comes <laughs> out on Tuesday. Yeah. It's called Nobody is Coming to Save You, uh, subtitle, A Green Beret's Guide to Getting Big Stuff Done. Uh, tell us about it. Yeah, so I wrote the book. As a young Green Beret, I learned early on, a lot of good senior sergeants taught me that, hey, in these rough, uh, trust-depleted places of churn in Afghanistan, nobody's coming to save you. Whatever you've got is what you've got. And the way that we survived and thrived was based on the relationships we built when trust was low. And it was, a, you know, old school interpersonal skills. And I think that's what we need in the country today. If you look at the country, no matter who wins the election, Pete, we're going to come out of this thing more divided than what we went in. And that really exposes us as a nation. And I think leaders are going to have to still connect with clients. They're still going to have to have those uncomfortable Thanksgiving mm -hmm. conversations. And this book is a, the old school interpersonal skills that Green Berets and other special operators use in low trust environments to build rapport and build relationships. Uh, interesting. Low trust environment is exactly what we're walking into. You mentioned it, and that was the page I was drawn to, the churn. The Just churn. explain that real quick. Yeah, I think we live in an unprecedented time of distraction, disengagement, and division in the country. It's just unprecedented, and we're, we're practicing like a form of shadow tribalism with each other, and we're actually going against what this country was founded on. And if we don't figure this out pretty soon, I mean, it could end in societal collapse. Mm -hmm. The churn is the enemy. The Republican or the Democrat across from you, no matter how this election sorts out, that's not the enemy. The enemy are, is this unprecedented social condition that we're dealing with, and that book will help people navigate those conditions and make better connections. Well, the book is Nobody is Coming to Save You. You sent this to me. I got it inscribed. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. If you want to get things done in difficult and distracted times, here's the guide for you. Colonel Scott Mann, thank you so much. Thank you, Pete. God bless you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.